Okay, guys, I'm here today for Ryan Hall. Huge honor for me. Guys, I think everybody knows who Ryan is, but uh, Ryan, in my opinion, he's very special because he had a successful career with Gi. He won the world as a purple belt. Then he joined to the No Gi World and he got third place in the ADCC when he was still a brown belt, right, Ryan? Yeah. And, the, and now he's like probably like one of the biggest or the biggest Jiu Jitsu representatives on MMA. He's doing very well on UFC using Jiu Jitsu, which is super impressive. And the, Ryan just shot an entire structure with us for BGJ Fanatics, all about his modern defensive guard. And today he's going to talk to us here a little bit about all these concepts that he has been developed during the, this, all these years about his guard. And uh, Ryan, a, a very interesting thing about you is that uh, when you got third place in the ADCC, you were just a brown belt. So mm -hmm. I can imagine how much your Jiu Jitsu has developed since then until nowadays, right? It had to because I was, I've been training for about five years at the time and then I, I realized that I was okay and then I trained with Murillo Santana and Marcelo Garcia and I realized I wasn't very good and I had to improve <laughs> a lot. So. so at that time you were training Jiu Jitsu only for five years? Yeah. So you got third place in the ADCC as a brown belt train only for five years. Uh, yeah, but I, I've done nothing but jujitsu during that time. I was I was fortunate to be in a situation where I could commit full time to it. But you know, I think like all of us, I love jujitsu oh. very much. Oh, right, that's very impressive. A lot of people commit full time and then don't, they don't even qualify to the ADCC. So that's that, that's super impressive. Thanks, man. Yeah. So but, uh, yeah. Anyways, very curious to learn all the concepts. Cool. Well, I, I guess I'd like to discuss a couple of them and then show like a demonstration of what we're going to be experiencing. And we're going to be going funneling into out, going, you know, demonstrating, you know, example, center line concept, alignment principle, you know, edge versus square. And for the purposes of finding your way into grappling positions that, again, you know, I've been able to use this gi, no gi fighting. And it's, it's something that, that's made a very, very big difference for me. So um, I'm looking for overarching ideas that tell me what to do all the time. So I don't have to know a thousand different moves. You know, of course we need to have experience, but really what I'm looking for is a couple guiding lights that can send me in the right direction most of the time and help me make better decisions more often. And good decisions are what uh, you know positive outcomes are made of. So if I'm on the bottom here, what I wanna be able to do is get close to Bernardo um, without feeling like I'm going to get crushed, which of course is going to be a tricky thing against someone who's at a super high level is big, but I'll give the best uh, impression that I can. So when I'm squared up, I have to understand the values of that. I have all four of my limbs. I have my head. So I guess you could say five limbs that I'm going to be able to utilize to check and to move forward. But I'm relatively speaking, uh, you know, stationary. It's very, very difficult for me. I can drag myself with my heels. But it's when I turn to my edge, I turn sideways and I present this sideways like a karate chop profile to Bernardo that I'm going to actually be able to utilize one of my limbs behind me for additional structure. And that's also going to allow me to build and start to create pressure. This is also going to allow me to rotate around my opponent and that's a huge deal. So what I want to show you guys is just going to be again going in to out, high to low, left to right and edge to square. So as I'm starting to encounter my opponent, I need to make sure that I'm, I'll, I'm projecting my structure. So Bernard, could you lean into me, please? It's kind of hard. It should be tricky. Yeah. Now, now yeah. I feel like I'm getting yeah. crushed. Yeah. What I'm gonna make sure that I'm doing is going from my long weapons to my shorter. So now that my posture is gonna be, my spine is gonna be the stick that's holding Bernardo's weight back. Can you be very heavy, please? I, I feel pretty comfortable here, even though I'm a little bit lighter. The yeah. downside that I'm going to find, though, is that I'm struggling to move closer. And I reach, and I just don't feel like I'm going to be able to underhook successfully. And if anything, I put my arm out on, a, on an island, and if Bernardo were to crank down on my arm, I would hate it. Because I'm like, oh, man, I just don't feel strong here. Now I'm going to be able to maintain my posture, transition to my edge from my square, keeping my posture up, but recognizing that my head is no longer what's holding him back. What do you feel right now, Bernardo, to keep you uh, at least uh, in check a little bit? I feel vulnerable here. It's a little bit on my shoulder, right? I yep. feel pretty good, and, and your base is, you feel very powerful and heavy, but it's allowing me to yep. underhook. Yep. Now, watch this, I'm gonna change my shape a little bit, and I'm like, oh no. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. I hated that happening. Well, if we come back for a second, if we notice, when I went from my square to my edge, that was great. But if my underhook is here, I feel fine. When I underhooked like this and I started to reach around Bernardo, if you notice the shape of my body changed from kind of convex, like pointy to concave, and now I started to become crushed. Yeah. And it seemed like an underhook was something that I wanted to do, uh, or the underhook, let's say a shape like this was what I wanted to do. But in reality, the underhook is actually 
just a little bit of a, a hook like a, like a clothes hanger that's gonna attach him to the edge of my structure. I don't wanna pull my opponent through me because it actually crumbles my structure. So again, as I make my initial contact with my longer weapons and I allow things to get closer, now I can rotate. Can you back away please, Bernardo? Should be difficult, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Can you come closer? I can. So I'm managing distance. I don't want to push Bernardo away from me as if I could, because again, he's got great pressure. The idea that I could push him off me is a little bit silly, but beyond that, it also would prevent me from attacking. So because I'm on my edge, I'm going to be able to build. I can start to create oh. pressure. And then if you start to drive back in to keep me down, I'm like, man, maybe I don't like this. I think I'm going to start to slide back to my square. Can you be heavy, please? It starts to lean in. Man, it feels heavy. I think I'll move him back square. Now I'll move to my edge. I can use my turtle shell square. Can you be heavy, please? No way. My underhook, if I change my shape, if you notice I'm on my edge, if I change my shape, <laughs> I immediately get crushed. So again, I'm recognizing the alignment principle that we've discussed. I'm recognizing the center line principle and also edge versus square, which is actually not, a, it's more of a heuristic than a principle. It's like kind of a quick like estimation. Um, but it's telling me whether or not I'm, I'm adhering to the proper, the principles that are guiding good decision making. When I started to break the rules, I started to notice really, really significant problems. My ability to, to sustain pressure coming in, which at a high level, everyone has pressure. You know, at a high level, everyone has power. It can't go, yeah, well, man, this guy has pressure. It's got to be really different. You want to be able to play your guard the same, whether I'm a beginner or yeah. I'm the best or in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if you have proper technique, then it works on everyone, right? Yeah. If I have eh, technique, and that's what I kind of experienced when I was earlier on in my career, things worked pretty well against most people, and then they didn't work at all against the best guys. And I had to kind of redo everything, really, and that, that's what I've experienced you know, multiple times over the course of my career. So I would say making sure that we are adhering to our structure. I am always able to sustain, just through the alignment of my bones, any sort of pressure that I have coming in, recognizing that we can rotate from our squares to our edge, to our square, to our edge. So to give one more example, if you don't mind. So if I'm square and you're heavy, I'm like, okay, don't be nice, please. I'm like, okay. Yeah, man, it's unbelievable like how much heavier I am than you. Can you lean lean, please? But even though like I'm feeling myself like light here, just because you're positioning yourself so well that I almost don't feel that I'm having much which is hopefully because the pressure is great, of course, but I have to be able to sustain it. And that's the sort of thing that, again, you've competed with the best guys in the world. So you know what it's like to have the heaviest, best, strongest people leaning yeah. on you. But you know how to make the little changes with your body yeah. that... Find angles that... Right, that diffuse the pressure. Because if yeah. they get to do what they want, yeah. of course they're going to be successful. Yeah. So I think that's a huge difference that we need to make sure that, that we're able to be sensitive to. And finding the principles that are going to guide our ability to on a moment-by-moment -moment basis make those correct decisions is gonna be huge because at least for me, I can't remember all the techniques. I remember some things, I remember a lot and I practice a lot, but the idea that we're gonna know the perfect move for every situation, um, I, I don't think is realistic. So we're looking for, again, guiding principles that tell us how to compose our body and uh, that's what you're gonna see a lot of in here. Yeah, all right, so would you, would you say that the biggest difference from the young Ryan Hall to the today's Ryan Hall is this understanding about how to position yourself absolutely and how to find the angles the to make sure you can absorb the high pressure and also put a lot of pressure yeah, absolutely before it was tricks and traps and if you were vulnerable to the tricks and traps i could get you okay. but but i felt like the people that were more fundamental the best guys in the world that were more fundamentally sound I might get lucky or effectively lucky every now and then, but it wasn't consistent. And we watch all the best guys in the world in any sport. Um, they're able to win against the other best people consistently, not just one out of 10 or two out of 10. And that's because their fundamental positioning is better. They're making better decisions more often and that's allowing them to be successful in spite of the fact that their opponents are powerful physically, powerful technically. And uh, I would say that is the big difference. And you know, I, I think I was a demonstration that you could go pretty far by being tough and tricky, you know, um, but it, I hit a I hit a brick wall, you know, at, at that time, you know, in terms of uh, ability level against the very, very best. And I, I think that now, um, you know, the things that we're discussing in this course and that we'll discuss in the future are the big difference between a pretty high level of success and a world-class level. Yeah, no, and I think like uh, even nowadays watching final UFC, 
uh, you position yourself on, on situations that one looks like everything is easy and two looks like they, it's really hard for him for them even to hit you to find you and uh, the, the principles are the same and that's my favorite thing we should be able to be successful in gi and no gi and mma if we have the practice because the principles that, that, that allow us to be powerful they, they transcend and that's what i'm trying yeah. to get across no, and we were just talking about that over there actually like just last week we had like uh warren ryan and nicholas Merigali both training gi and no gi mm -hmm. And they both did very well on, on, yeah, on, on the, fantastic. The, that's yeah. jiu-jitsu, you know, like, if you're, yeah. if you're good, you, and I think that you were a great example of that, you know, like, you, you did well with gi, you did well no gi, and now you're being one of the only ones that are getting to use jiu-jitsu one in a day, and, uh, I, I think that's the, that's the trick, like you mentioned, like, when you're talking about guys like Murigali, guys like Gordon, you know, it's like, guys like yourself, you know, you're, you're talking about some people that their, their fundamentals are so strong, and they have so much experience that, they are able to grasp whether in, like intellectually or intuitively, like the magic, the most important things that they can take from one sport or one type of the art to another type of the art. And if they were to do submission only or points or wrestling, they would all be good. They would be fine no matter what. But I think that sometimes the things that allow it, that you can be successful at a slightly lower level without that understanding. And, yeah. I, and I think that's why the, the best and most successful competitors tend to be able to, it's like Audrey Gracie, like, Gi, no gi, one FC champion, or like the yeah, men, there's there's some magic running through this whole thing, and I think that's what we're all shooting for. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And the, I was I was watching the teaching this instructional, oh, right, and it fascinates me how much he understands about the physiology of the human body, you know, like. Right. And the, and I think like everybody who who buys our, our videos, they want to understand exactly those whys that you teach, you know, like why when you're playing bird fly mm -hmm. you should stay like this with your body aligned yeah and it, because many times we learn the moves but we learn like oh do this yeah but why am i doing this and and you get to articulate that so well that makes it easy to understand you know? i'm trying i've always been too stupid to be able to figure out each individual move and also too <laughs> stubborn if i don't understand why i'll like sit in the corner and not want to do anything so i, I would say that that's been the thing that's helped me and I, and i hope that it can be helpful to other people too okay yeah probably there's a reason why your nickname is the wizard because so. <laughs> i'm a dork <laughs> No, but anyways, guys, right? I just showed an entire structure all about the modern defensive guard that is pretty much like the guard that you see he using lately in the UFC and also like on all his grappling career. ADCC later this year. But all with the... And he's also going to do the ADCC this year. So you're going to see a lot of this guard. And the, we, we follow these new principles that he developed. And the, so make sure to check it out. The course is going to be very soon at bjjfanatics.com. Maybe by the time we're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And thanks so much, Ryan. Thank you so much, awesome. Ryan. I appreciate it. Thank Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.